Game Breaker TV. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Guildcast, episode number 14 for March 15th, 2012. You're watching Game Breaker. I'm Gary Gannon, and today it's the news you've all been waiting for. Well, it's not a release date, but it's still pretty cool. Plus, your viewer questions and a whole lot more. But first, from Massively.com, Mr. Sean Schuster, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing, Gary? Good. We somehow missed each other at GDC, but I see you've trimmed down the beard and you're looking pretty fly. Yeah. Did the kids still say fly? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think I don't know. Just I'm gonna say you're looking pretty fly. And from Massively as well as Mr. Dylan Ashton Kutcher Tirani. How are you, sir? Dude, I'm doing great. You I'm know, so I'm not excited gonna, to be on your show again, man. You know, I'm not gonna live uh, that down. I can't like intro you without making a reference. I'm sorry. Just, hey, man. The more the merrier, dude. It's listen. Being on your show is awesome because you're like a modern day marquee dragon with like some Ryan Seacrest. So it's oh. like it's like the best thing that's ever happened to me to get invited to your show. So that's awesome. Well, welcome on. back. We love having you. <laughs> All right, so first up this week, uh, Arena Net put out a thank you. Thank you video up on Facebook. Let's take a look at this. Hey everyone, I'm Colin Johansson, and on behalf of everyone here at ArenaNet, we'd like to say thank you for signing up for the Guild Wars 2 beta. Uh, we are excited and humbled that so many of you signed up to join in our next event. Unfortunately, we only have a limited number of slots for our upcoming beta. However, we will have more beta events in the future. Uh, since not all of you are going to get to join in the event, we've put together a special video, and this is the first look at some additional footage from Guild Wars 2. Thank you all, and we look forward to seeing you in game. the only one who cried out in rage when I got the email thinking it was my beta invite and it was that anybody else yeah it's it's a little tease such a tease I thought the email was gonna be like welcome to beta everybody and it was like hey here's a thank you sorry if you guys don't get in but uh... yeah. I don't know I didn't think it was like I didn't think you know a lot of people are saying it's like they're trolling us I didn't think it was that bad. I think it was kind of their way of saying, you know, thank you for applying and, you know, just a reminder, you're not all going to get in. But, yeah, at the same time, <laughs> people took that as, wait a minute, you know, you, that's not very nice. Yeah, I don't think that they meant it like that, though, right? Yeah. I mean, I didn't take no. it as that. They're really just saying thank you. I think they're being humbled by the amount of people that actually signed up and they can't believe it. They're like, hey, we can't accommodate everybody, but we want to say thank you. Dylan, how did you take it? Yeah, you don't, you don't really see a lot of content like that that's the uh, developer saying thank you for taking your time. Uh, to do something that might not reward you at all. So, I mean, Blizzard was quoted saying, like, hey, your reward is you get to see content that's going to go all over the world, you know, and uh, this is just a nice little touch, so. Yeah, I didn't take it as a troll at all. I mean, that's like the internet term for everything these days. Trolling, if you don't find it like it, you just trolled me. Uh, so, but but actually, you know, despite what the video says, I mean, pretty much the good news that came out this week as well is that pretty much everyone can get into beta, right? I mean, ArenaNet announced their pre-purchase program this week, and it's coming on April 10th. Now, I notice I said pre-purchase, not pre-order. Very, very diff big difference there. So you must pre-purchase Guild Wars 2, and, and you'll, you'll, get in the game, you'll get in beta. Um, if you go for just the regular pre-order, which we're used to for most games, like slapping your five bucks down. All you get is a one-day uh, head uh, head start. 
So no beta. What did you guys think of this? I mean, the one, the one, I, I think this is kind of a cool way to do it, but at the same time, I'm almost wondering if people are going to be confused by the pre-purchase, pre-order, especially since we're all used to pre-order. Right. There's a lot of controversy over the uh, like retailer versus digital download world right now. And uh, to quote like a, a local uh, recording uh, manager for a record label in my city, he said, hopefully one day musicians won't need labels. You know what I mean? And so there's a lot of people who say that hopefully with the digital download, you, uh, you remove kind of the politics of the situation. Uh, I'm neither here nor there on that side, but I think that's one thing that they're looking at is they're pushing, hey, here's the benefits of you pre-purchasing it with us. You know what I mean? This is what you get. And man, if you want to push down that road, we could even go into now with, uh, this is totally off Guild Wars 2 topic, but man, the Kickstarter campaigns are insane, right? Oh, it's man. like, you could almost oh. be like, yeah, what, uh, double fine raising, like, what, what did they have, 3.3 million or something? It's crazy, 2.3 yeah. million? So you could almost say, like, studios might getting pushed out, like record labels getting pushed out. Anyway, I digress. Uh, but I agree. I don't know, there's a lot of confusion. I'm watching chat room, and they're even like, what's the difference? Pre-purchase means you put down your credit card today, and you pay the full price, and you'll be charged for purchasing Guild Wars 2 right now. You'll get into beta. But if you just kind of do a pre-order and put down your $5 and wait for the actual release, you'll only get the head start. Now, to add one more little bit of layer of confusion to this, I tried do, doing a little digging. Do you guys know anything? Have you got, did you guys see that they were tweeting? ArenaNet was tweeting about uh, Amazon didn't count for the pre-purchase because they only charge you on delivery. Hmm. Yeah, I, I saw that. It's a pretty high topic on Reddit right now, actually with that whole situation going on. So I think that's going to make some people upset. But um, I don't know, you know but I'm you putting guys remember the pre-order. From... Sorry, I'm putting cats sorry. on the internet because they're more popular than me and you. No, they're awesome. I love it. Guys, sorry, I totally was trolling Sean there. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't watching. That's my own mistake. So anyways, uh, it's it's a really high topic on Reddit. Uh, so <laughs> The Amazon deal? Yeah. Yeah, and it was a big deal in Star Wars The Old Republic, too. Um Amazon had to, I don't remember what, it had to do with the delivery date of the collector's edition. People were getting punished. So I think like gamers who are doing the pre-order right now on Amazon are probably going through a really stressful time right now, if you guys remember that. Yeah, and I actually like, yeah. so right before the show, I, I, I went and looked on the Guild Wars 2 website and maybe it's there somewhere, but I went through the FAQ and I actually couldn't find this information. I couldn't find the stipulation. Um, I'm kind of afraid that a lot of gamers out there might Get 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 caught and uh, and and kind of order with the wrong company here and think they're getting something. I mean, Sean, have you guys have you heard this as well amongst the Master League? Here? No, I didn't. I didn't hear anything about that. It's uh, if it's just something that they're tweeting, yeah, that's you know what like ten percent of their uh, their you know fan base there. It's it's not going to really be a a good way to you know get the word out. It doesn't make any sense. Right. So we're getting the word out. At, uh, don't I guess if you want to pre-purchase it, do not order it at Amazon, which is not a really good uh, endorsement for Amazon right now. But it sounds like they don't charge your card until they actually ship, which means you wouldn't be pre-purchasing the game, and you won't get into any of the betas, and you're going to be screwed. So I don't know. Go with one of the other outlets. There's a there's a bunch of information on the website right now. You can go check out here uh, to learn more about it. But like I said, I couldn't find that information. So I don't know where that actually exists. I mean, I, I, I'm almost going to assume if, if it's, if it's on Reddit, I'm almost going to think that arena Net's probably going to make a statement about this or put it in their FAQ or something. Um, let's talk about these additions really quick. So there's three versions of guild wars two available. There's a standard, there's the deluxe edition. And of course the collector's edition, uh, everyone who pre-purchases regardless of which edition, again, I say pre-purchases, We'll get uh, the Heroes Band, which, uh, what do you guys think? Is this basically a, this is an in-game ring, I assume? A little stat perk. Yeah. yeah, either that or it's like Rock Band, but it's with Heroes. Could be. Could be. <laughs> no? That's a good guess. <laughs> I'm going to say no. <laughs> uh, you're also going to get three days of Head Start at launch. And, of course, the biggest of all, the largest carrot on the stick for any of these packages, you are going to get access, guaranteed access, to all Guild Wars 2 beta events. Every one of them. So uh, I guess there's going to be a couple people in this beta. And uh, from what I hear, there's also no NDA. So this is pretty much open beta? Yeah, sounds like it. And since they're starting this April 10th, it makes you wonder, you know, all those people who, 
who uh, the, the million people who signed up for beta, you know, a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. Uh, when are they going? I guess they're going to get in before this. Or, wow, you know that's a good mean? question. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one thing important to remember that uh, if they're letting a lot of people on, that's really good for the servers for them to kind of test out the bugs and like the capabilities of it. So uh, I say the more the merrier, honestly, since it's beta and it's a test, let's get everybody in there and make sure it's not going to crash on day one and just hope for a uh, a rift or better launch. You know what I mean? Like, I, guess, I think it's a good thing. And I guess one possibility to what you're saying, Sean, is that uh, the pre-purchasers are going to get into the weekend events. The other people who signed up for the beta could possibly be in a longer ongoing beta that continues throughout the week. I uh, I don't know. I don't think they're going to tell us, to be honest. But what do you what do you <laughs> Sean, But what do you think this says about like you know kind of? I'm going to say this is pretty much going into open beta. When they hit this point, it's going to be no NDA. Everything's going to drop. You're going to be able to talk about it. I guess. I mean, do you think this shows you know shows kind of a lot of confidence in the in ArenaNet's confidence for the product? Yeah, I mean, I think that they know that there's a, you know, uh, they, they kind of tested that already with the beta signups. A million people, you know, are, are ready to uh, to sign up. Now, I don't know what percentage of those would buy this as a pre-purchase right away to get in for sure. Um, but I would say it's a pretty good chunk of that, you know. I don't, you know, 90% maybe right off the bat. Uh, so it, it seems like that was kind of their way to test us. Now they're going to actually give us the, the rewards that we can see when we pre-purchase the game and and uh, and then everybody's in you know everybody who wants to get in is going to get in so like you said it's almost like an open beta except it's uh 60 to 150 dollars and i feel like if i feel like if the uh the game breaker community is any much of a you know litmus test or, or, or group of people to, to to gauge how many of these they're going to sell I think you're right, like 90% of the Guild Wars 2 fans out there are probably going to be pre-purchasing rather than pre-ordering. I mean, there's so yeah. many fans that know that they're going to play. Um, the, the one thing we don't know about this, or I think a lot of people have been asking questions, is how many week, weekend beta events are they actually going to hold? And they're not saying, right? They're saying that they just think sometime late April might be the first one. Um, I know Bioware fans were kind of disappointed in that area a little bit when, with the Star Wars weekend events. Um... Dylan, I mean, you've seen anything else on like Reddit or anywhere else? Like, how, how are most of the fans, the community, pretty much happy with uh, the way they're structuring this? I think that the fact that they're going to let everybody in kind of pushes the the other stuff aside. You know, if if everybody's going to get in, what they're basically saying is, is it, hey, if you're going to buy this game, we're going to give you the reward of getting in the beta, and they're already putting themselves in front of the competition because they're offering that incentive. So, yeah, I mean, I think that. I don't know. Again, I just think it's a great thing what they're doing with the pre-purchase. I think it'll push aside that there might only be two or three weekends. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so too. I th you know, they're supposed to do these weekends once a month. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see them, you know, waiting until the end of the year to launch. At, you know, at the point that they're at now. Uh, hopefully, I, I'm I'm banking. You know, I don't know anything, of course, you know, behind the scenes or anything, but I'm banking on the fact that they're probably going to launch this summer. So if they do one a month. One uh, beta week in a month, you know that's that's a couple. They don't really need to do you know seven or eight to eight of these. So I would say they're pretty probably pretty close to launch if they're releasing this information right now. And Sean, how do you think? How does this come into in, into work with you know you guys on Massively get like you know tons of games with beta keys being handed out in mass to for contests and all that kind of stuff. How do you think that's going to work? And do you think we're going to see? The same thing with Guild Wars 2. Do you think we're going to see beta keys start f getting out there, or do you think they're going to kind of be a little bit more tight with that, with doing this whole pre-purchase kind of scenario? I think they're going to be a lot tighter with it uh, because of this pre-purchase thing. You know, they. I mean, I guess other companies have done that. So Tor is a good example. You know, they they announced the, the uh, you know the fact that you'll get in early access if you you know pre-order the game and then they had a giant you know they gave like a hundred thousand keys to each site and uh, and, the, and it was a giant giant uh, beta event but um I don't know it just seems like it's one of those things where do you give out the keys to get people excited about it and then pre-purchase or do you restrict it so that you know people will pre-purchase to get into the beta it's I don't know it's one of those things it's like a business decision that I'm it's way over my head. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting. What do you think, Dylan? Do you think maybe just uh, maybe they do like one last like big hype push of keys towards the end? 
I wouldn't expect to see a hype. Um, the only thing that I would expect, again, because they're giving out this incentive, is that there will be uh, beta keys on like major fan sites, like major fan sites that are going to drive a lot of people to them where they can get a lot of Guild Wars 2 information, get that hype, and also apply for the beta. Um, I think it'll be used as a tool to bring people to the community and stuff like that more than you know a way to just hand them out like crazy. So. So the uh, the standard edition here is going to cost you sixty bucks, and basically you get the game. Like I said, and every, all of these get the uh, the weekend events. This is the pre purchase, three days head start. And the heroes band, you're just going to get the game. I mean that sounds pretty fair. I mean it's sixty bucks. That's pretty much the cost of every game out there. Nothing crazy there. Uh, if you go for the, the uh, digital deluxe edition, you're going to get some in game items. You're going to get the first of which uh, looks. What is this? An elite skill to summon a Mistfire wolf pet in combat. Do we know? Uh, do we know anything more about the elite skills and how they work, Sean? Oh man, I don't, I'm not gonna. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble here because I, I don't know exactly, and I know that there are people listening right now who know exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I, so I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna dodge that one. You're gonna dodge that one. All right. Because yeah, I guess the concern here is. Is there any concern amongst anybody that you know this is this could be a little bit too much as a paid bonus on this item? Is there a little bit too much of a perk here, possibly? With you the mean, uh, like a game changer, <laughs> the game changer. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I think I don't know. like with the emphasis they've been putting on balance, like especially with the structure of PvP and stuff like that. I really don't think ArenaNet, who is really focusing on their reputation of being like a great developer, is going to put out something that's pay to win. I think it'll be a spell that might get out leveled, and then it'll be there as a vanity uh, and an exclusive vanity for those people who got it. So, that's my thoughts. And it's not like I mean, if this is a, for an in combat pet, it's not like this is going to be the only in combat pet. I mean, it'll probably, I mean, you'll probably replace this thing by level ten, right? I mean, you'll probably get some dragon or something cool at ten. Yeah, that's usually how that works. Kind of hold you over for a little while. It's the the cheap carrot. Uh, we also get a non-combat pet uh, in the form of a uh, miniature Ritlock Brimstone. Super cool. Is he anyone special? Never heard of him. Never heard that name before, ever. He kind of a... What? He, is he kind of known? <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a troll. That, yeah, that, 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 is, that, a troll. that is a complete troll. That's the definition of a yeah. troll. Well, but seriously... Uh, uh, Sean, for people new to Guild Cast, maybe new to Guild Wars, didn't play one. Who is Ritlock? He is the char that uh, is kind of one of the stars of all the books. Uh, go out and buy the the, the books. I, I would say uh, it'll teach you all about Ritlock. But w when you play the game, also Ritlock is is uh, a big part of the game. It's kind of like each race has its own hero uh, of the storyline, and, and also in the novels. Uh, and Ritlock is like the char version of that hero. Uh, next up on this list here, we've got... This is an interesting one. You've got a Golem Banker. But what was interesting about this one is that it's only for five days. So you can access your bank from anywhere in the world. But it's on a limited time basis. Dylan, what do you think of this? I mean, this is kind of an interesting kind of perk to give in-game. And it's like, hey, five days, nice little perk, but then it's gone. Hey, if you're a if you're a good grinder and you're gonna be hitting you know the quest right from the start, uh, a, a bank that's mobile for crafting resources, um, items that you want to keep your collector's edition items that you don't want taking up precious inventory space. I think it's just like a uh, you know like an, an extra perk to get moving. And then you know you might see it later. Like Ultima Online had stuff like that that was reagent based. So maybe. Later, you could still use it, but it's like an expensive reagent to use it or something. Well, that was you the know. first thing I was thinking of, is that they're going to give you this for five days, and they're going to take it away, and then it's going to be in the cash shop. It seems like a perfect item to be in the cash shop for you to buy something as a microtransaction, right? Get you used to it and go like, wow, that was so awesome when I was anywhere, and I could, you know, check my guild bank and everything else, and then you're like, oh, this kind of sucks that I don't have it anymore. You think any so does that mean that we're going to rent stuff now? Like they're going to have rentals in GW2? It's actually been a, it's actually been a pretty successful model for some other games. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'll, I'll tell you this much: there um, on their career site, they were looking for a microtransactions producer, and I don't know what other game they would plan on using one of those for. So, 
I mean, Sean, you said that with kind of wondering, like, uh, would that kind of annoy you if you could buy something with a X number of uses as a rental? Yeah, it would annoy me, but I think, um, I mean, when you break it down, it's not that bad. You know, you're, you're, when you're paying $15 a month for a game, which you're not going to be doing for Guild Wars 2, you know, you're, you're essentially renting the game anyway. So it's, you know, when you break it down like that, it's not such a bad deal. I'm just not a big fan of when that's introduced with a sub game, but of course, Guild Wars 2 is not going to be a sub game. So. Sure, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking that this, this type of an item might definitely be acquirable after the fact once it's gone. I, I guess you could possibly maybe make this a craftable item, but it kind of sounds more like something they might do a microtransaction on to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so finally, up on here, there is the uh, Chalice of Glory and the Tome of Influence. That one time only. Provides a bonus to your PvP currency and your guild's influence. So once again, some limited time stuff. Obviously, perks for like you said, Dylan. The uh, did you call it the early grinder? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like the the guy that's taking two days off work as soon as this thing's released, and drinking nine Mountain Dews and going at it. This is what kills me. It's like I want all this stuff, and I'll be like, I'll be so psyched to have it. I'll be like, I got these perks, yeah. and they're good for five days, and then I'm gonna get sidetracked and be like, Game Breaker takes up so much of my time, and I don't get to play. And then all of a sudden, five days is gonna go by, and I'm like, I never even saw my golem. Damn, yeah. what a waste. And the forums are gonna be just covered with people saying like they lost their internet, or you know something happened, and they want their five days back, and they want you know, it's gonna be. Uh, I, I hate to see it. <laughs> Gary, you just blew my mind on saying those are cash items, man. You are 100% right. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to grip people in with them. You know, like, you will love these items. Well, that's what I'm saying. These seem like the most yeah. enticeable items. PvP bonus, right. <laughs> you know, uh, PvP currency bonus, guild influence bonus, a bank anywhere in the world. Seem like, you know, quality of life things that almost every single gamer would love to have in their arsenal. So why not give it to you, you know, for X number of days? You're going to buy these. These, these are going to be the three that you're just going to be like, we have to have these. Our guild needs these. Our P we want the PvP. Yeah, it's totally going to happen. Uh, what do you guys think? So 80 bucks, 80 bucks for that edition. What do, you, what do you think of the price point? Are you guys happy with uh, the amount of perks? Um, yeah, I mean, it's another 20 bucks over the, just the game itself. You're also uh, going to get – no, no, you're not getting the Ritlock – Miniature. Yeah, you're not getting any of that stuff. None of the digital. Now, the fact that half of these are temporary, you yeah. know, I, I, it, that kind of rubs me wrong for $20. But uh, I guess it depends on how much it'll be in the cash shop anyway. Yeah, the the only thing that's really valuable to me is, like, the Ritlock miniature item because, you know, you have something to show off for the whole game. Mm -hmm. So that's what do you, why I buy it. That's why I pre-order. You guys, how do you guys, I mean, is this sort of like, is this, is this in between one, possibly maybe the one you skip? Yeah, I, would you guys either go for the standard or just go for the whole, the big, the big package, which we're going to get into in a second, the collector's edition? Yeah, that's almost twice as much, though. That's crazy. That's, uh, but I mean, there, there are a lot of physical items there. Um, I'm sure you want to go over those. I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about them. So you, here's the collector's edition, which they announced. You get everything we just talked about, plus you get a bunch of physical items. So the most notable, obviously, being this 10-inch uh, figurine of this guy, Ritlock. I don't know. He's supposed to be important or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I like the statues. I don't know, man. I, I'm kind of trying to build my little collection here. I don't have many, but I got, you know, I got this one. I got some EverQuest, so... <laughs> I, you need Ritlock back there. I do need Ritlock back there. Yes. I see. I see. Dylan's got you know Malgus back there, yeah. which I got Malgus, man. So hey, I'm still happy to see it supported for the Die Hard balance starts. You know, from the wallet. <laughs> so for the people that want it out there, they're gonna get a statue and a map and like an epic frame with some art. Like I, I think that's. I got the Warcraft Three Collector's Edition at a second time around shop for fifteen dollars, and it was one of the best days of my life. Wow, fifteen! But I mean, I've got, I, I've got all the CDs right here. They kind of sit next. I got the, you know, get the cat right. and then all of these back here. I buy them all. Let's see, we got that one. What else we got? Look at this one. I might start. I might, yes. start, I, might yeah. start, I might start throwing this one soon. I'm not I, sure. Yeah. Hey, I oh. have that one too. I have that one too. <laughs> Wait. My my miniature's broken in it. Mine got delivered with a broken miniature. Oh, we lost Gary. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> grab his his beast. 
Should I get mine, mine too? Yeah. Like, are we going to be comparing? Just <laughs> see now that. Oh man. I can't forget about my favorite one. Yeah. It's my favorite. My favorite. One of my favorites. <laughs> it's got something else written on it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Sean, are you a fan? Are you a fan of the collector's editions? Do you buy them? Uh, I have a few. I have. Um, let's see. I have Lord of the Rings. Uh, Guild Wars Nightfall, Rift, uh, Old Republic. I have a couple, um, but I mean, I'm definitely going to buy this one. I, you know, who, who am I kidding? I kind of. But uh, I, what do you feel? <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel about the price creeping up, though? I mean, 150 now. We're getting into the, you know, blizzards were yeah. usually like what? What were they? 80, right? Yeah, I mean that was you know a couple of years ago, but uh, yeah, it's it, it seems like they're trying to offer more and more of these physical items, and then they're you know, so they can charge just an astronomical amount. But I mean, this dart prints are cool. You know, I mean, there's no denying that Guild Wars Two has the, you know, Guild Wars has the best, you know, artists. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I mean, the Ritlock thing is cool. Soundtrack, uh, custom art frame. I don't really get that. So you just like switch out your art. Yeah, prints. you get those art yeah, prints. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I like is it? That. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't want you you don't want you know just your art. So yeah, so let me. You get a what is it? You get a hundred and twelve page book here, with uh, the making of Guild Wars two. Like you said, you get the soundtrack and you get five high quality art prints. You see those on the right laying there, and you get a frame to put them in, so you can kind of swap them out once in a while. I don't mind the frame. I kind of like the frame. You know, you got those high quality prints. They're just gonna kind of lay around and get bent up and stuff like that. So hopefully you can store them. Um, How's there, how, how are the interwebs in the, you know, faring with this, with the price point kind of moving up to $150 range? I mean, it is pricey. I mean, $150 bucks to drop on a game is kind of pricey. Taking it off balances it for me is the fact that I still don't have to pay a sub. Hey, yeah. you know what, though? It's, the funny thing is is that people like to flex their wallets on things that they love, man. I mean, I, yeah. I personally will not be getting the Guild Wars 2 one. But if you love the Guild Wars series, if you've read the books, it's worth every dime. And then you got the in-game bonus too, where you get to see, hey, look, I dropped 150. That's there right. You go. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> I might have paid on it for four months, but I did it because I love this game. <laughs> Lay away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, though, I think a big thing here is that they're not offering anything in-game for that highest tier for that for that highest tier of collector's edition. Um, if you had something like the original prophecies. Collector's Edition had glowy hands, and it might sound like such a you know glowy hands. Who cares? But right now, you go on eBay and you look at the Prophecies Collector's Edition, and that thing is selling for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Just because, because of that item? Yeah, because of that item, and people get to show off and be like, "I have the original games Collector's Edition." And so, I mean, for Guild Wars Two, it seems like they should have thrown in an in-game item just so that people in-game can like you know like Dylan said, you want to show off. And you want to show off in game too, because I mean, who, who, you know, who are we kidding? No one's going to come over to our house and see these things. <laughs> you know what I mean? My, my coworkers <laughs> and all my friends that I brought over, they see that big Star Wars box, and they're just like, "So you spent 150 dollars on this, huh?" <laughs> well, all right, man, that's cool. But like to this day, I regret not getting the StarCraft II Collector's Edition for the uh, Thor with the wings. I, I regret that, and that's why I got the Star Wars one. You get the the uh, unique T7, so you get your unique companion, uh, and a few other things. This one. Unique companion. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> 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 I'm so jelly. I I didn't think I was gonna play. I'm like, yeah, I'll play the uh, single player campaign. I wasn't that good at Starcraft one. No. Oh, um, yeah. the level of expertise in StarCraft does not match the quality of you know, owning the, 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 the CE. That is definitely, I'm a proven fact by that. Yeah, just because I have it does not mean I'm good at it whatsoever. <laughs> um, that's a really good point, though, Sean. That's a really good point is that there is no, not one really good in-game, even cosmetic item that really just shows off that you're a CE purchaser from maybe like day one that goes away and then like, you know, two, three years from now, you can still kind of show off in game and be like, yo, what's up? I got the glowy hands. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually really, what if that was an oversight? Cause that almost seems like I didn't, I, didn't, I, I kind of missed, I didn't even think about the fact that there's nothing in there like that. Cause that's, that is the ultimate like show off, right? That's why you buy the $25 sparkle pony, right? You want to show it off yeah. in game. 
you can't show it to your friends. Like Dylan said, your friends in real life could care less. They think you're just a complete knob, like for spending 150 <laughs> bucks on a statue. You want to show it to your friends in game, and they totally get it, and then they're all envious. And they're like, "Oh man, that's badass." Yeah, it doesn't end up well putting a picture of the uh, the sparkly pony mount. Next, you know, you and your wife both on them on your Facebook. <laughs> don't do it. It really does. People will just be like, "Dude, I I thought I knew you, and now I don't." <laughs> <laughs> Chat room has a great idea. ArenaNet, glowy feet. Put it in the CD. There you go. We need glowy Man. feet. You did glowy hands. Do glowy feet. Add it in there. What does? What, it's not too late. It's not. It really for, isn't. For Star Wars, they needed um, for guild like instead of a guild tavern for Star Wars, they needed guild shoes. They needed you know, like a team shoe. Like a Nike. <laughs> like for a, hotball, man. I mean, it's come on. Give you like a Back to the Future <laughs> Nike. Yeah. Guys, what do you think? What do you think of the price? 150 bucks for the CE. What do you think of the uh, whole entire package kit and caboodle? You guys happy with it? You guys think it's a little bit too much? Leave a comment below in the show and let us know what you think of the Guild Wars 2 pre-orders. They're coming soon. Get your pretty purchase in if you want beta. Uh, so there's one interesting uh, line here in the uh, FAQ that we kind of pulled out. I wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, it says... The first BWE, that's Beta Weekend event, is currently planned for late April, and we expect to have one every month or so. The schedule is subject to change and will be confirmed at a later date. Currently, we do not know how many of these events we will have. So the question is, and you kind of hinted on this before, to, uh, Sean, you know, how many months is it going to be? I mean, it sounds like it's definitely going to be more than two or three, doesn't it? Yeah, I would say right around there. Probably uh, not more than like five or six, though. That, that seems almost, like a little too many. Seems like a little long, right? Five or six seems like a lot. Yeah. So that almost helps us try to pinpoint when launches, you know, if we're going to speculate like that. Midsummer? I hope so, yeah. What do you think, Dylan? Yeah, it, it was up in the air until uh, Diablo 3 released a date, and now I feel like they'll definitely do Guild Wars 2. So that people aren't like just hitting that like end game gear right when it comes out, you know, right when Guild Wars 2 comes out. So they'll probably compete, and I would expect maybe an expansion around Christmas time. Wow, look at you, expansion at Christmas. Some, people, some tin, tinfoil hats out there are actually thinking, you know, so Guild Wars 2 comes to stores Christmas 2012. Some people are thinking it might be Christmas. I don't know. Do you think that they would wait that long? I don't think so. No, I don't think they'd wait that long. That, I mean, I think the biggest thing is, you know, we have this order information here. We, uh, we, we know that there are going to be beta weekends once a month. It's, it's just not going to be, not something they're going to drag on because they're only going to piss people off, you know, if they do that. Yeah. It's been like, what, they announced this in 2007. I mean, it's been several years. People are so ready to buy this game. People are so ready. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be about two, three, two, three months tops where people would start losing their minds all right let's do some viewer questions first up from justin uh debaca i don't know justin's cute i don't know i like bunny ears but i don't know what that last name is i don't know how to say that I'll tr i tried uh what profession do you think will be played the most what do you think sean mm, i think initially the uh the new one of the new professions something like engineer probably thief I noticed uh, during beta there were a lot of thieves, um, but I think after a while, you know, people will start kind of evening out, and there'll probably be, you know, a lot of mesmers, necromancers, LE stuff like that will kind of rise up. But I think at the very beginning, it'll be the new ones. What do you think, Dylan? Yeah, I'm saying NG and mesmer most likely would be the most one played. Uh, any range class, uh, you know, you're going to see a ton of warriors, but. I'm, I'm saying NG and Mesmer will be everywhere. Yeah, I'm agreeing with the Mesmer. I think Mesmer is going to be everywhere because it seems like such a different kind of a class, a little bit more complex. Seems just like, you know, the Guild Wars 2 community seems to be super excited about it. So, all right, next up, uh, this one from Timothy Horn. Timothy asks, uh, what's the most convincing argument you can give as to why someone should play GW2? 15 seconds, go, Dylan. Uh, structured PvP. It's going to be balanced and fun, and I think the biggest thing that uh, tears people away from PvP is the grind, and I think you're going to be able to just jump in and kill your enemies and friends. John? Uh, it's not like anything else out there. 
Wow, that was three seconds. That was awesome. And I'll give you sure. Wait, no subscription. Next question uh, from Steve Espinoza says, uh, do you think not supporting dueling at launch is a big deal? What do you think, Sean? Do you mean like PvP dueling? Uh, Cause I don't know the, the spelling there. Yeah, maybe it's dual spec. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I I read I read in an interview that the main reason they are not supporting it is because we are really concerned that if we allow dueling players, will make the mistake of dueling Dylan Tarani, and then they won't want to play anymore. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> that was it. No, I think is this just is this this is for one v one? Is that what this is? Right. Well, yeah. Um, that's why I saw dueling with the A, and I thought they meant like dual class, but um, yeah, if spelling's it's dueling off. with the E, yeah, the spelling's yeah, wrong. It's, then uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't think that that's something that you need to have in a game. You know, they're going to have so many other levels of PvP, world PvP, and you know, uh, the different arenas and all that, and, and Lions Arch, and it, it's like that's kind of where the PvP is. You know, dueling is so 2005, right? I don't know, is it? Because uh, the one thing that could be looked at, you know, you could use it with your friends to, to get better and learn and sit on vent yeah. and talk to each other and kind of, you know, come up with tactics and counters and things like that. And you can also go to the noob zones and um, and, and bother uh, brand new players with dual requests over and over and over and over and over and over. Outside of Orgrimmar. That's why I'm glad it's not there. Yeah, right outside of Orgrimmar just wouldn't be the same without yes. it, right? Exactly. <laughs> What do you think, Dylan? Do you think this might hurt them if they don't have one of you ones? I just I don't think it's a quality of life thing that's going to be necessary right off the back. Um, it you got a very good point that pra dueling PvP is what made me a great PVE player was because I was mobile and stuff like that. So it's definitely something they're going to need for practice, but it's definitely not like a launch day. Gotta launch have day. it. All right, next question from Keith uh, Downey. Keith says, uh, with uh, the persistent structure of WVW. And the squad system that allows for easier synergy, do you feel that there is potential for players to become known as leaders in the community of a server that coordinate the war effort? It's actually a good question. What do you think, Dylan? Uh, definitely. I mean, that's how, first of all, that's how it used to be back in the, in the day. But second of all, I mean, I'm going to work personally. I'm going to work harder to impress my server. You know what I mean? So I think that there's a lot of people out there that will take the PvP really seriously, and especially like the world new world. And, you know, it'll get to the point where other worlds will be like, man, we really, we don't want G Graves to be on their team doing the, you know, the sieging or whatever. I think it's going to, it's definitely going to happen. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, I think so too. And I think that's a huge feature. You know, uh, player driven content is such a big deal these days in, in a lot of games that are coming out, and especially Guild Wars 2. So I think, um, you know, that, that player driven leadership almost you know where you, you you can establish yourself like that i think that's a huge deal and i'm really glad that um that it's possible and i hope that it's embraced i totally agree as well because i remember back in the day everybody get your drink swg uh when we had like you know player build structures and we had a lot of open world pvp there were just natural uh, leaders amongst the group you know there were there were just good leaders who could rally the troops and actually come up with strategies and send people off to flank and do all kinds of stuff like that, and it, it, it actually takes leadership to kind of do that. And I think with looking at the size of these WVW maps and stuff, it is going to actually hopefully take actual strategy and thought and coordination and being on, you know, headset with your buddies, which, by the way, you should go check out C3. Plug, download C3. Going to take over the world. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's absolutely going to uh, actually do that. Dylan Tarani. Yes. Thank hey. you so much for being on the show again. I love it. I love it. He said before, as he goes back in the day. This kid's like twelve. He's like back in the day. Twenty, twenty-five. Twenty-five. <laughs> I'm old man in gamer age. That's an old man. Oh uh, well, thank you Gary, so much. Thank you, though. Seriously. Thanks for being on the show. It's always great having you on the show, Mr. Sean Schuster. Follow him on the Twitter. Go to Massive.com. Epic beard. Not so epic anymore. Not so epic. It's, it's still pretty epic. It's pretty tame. It's kind of turning into an Abe Lincoln beard. Oh. Go with a neck beard. Just shave the sides. Be pretty amazing. Designs. There you go. Yeah. Be yeah. like kid and play. I said you would look fly. That's how show. That's a shows how old I am. 
All right, follow me. <laughs> follow me on Twitter at Gary Gannon and come over to GameBreaker.tv and follow GameBreaker TV at GameBreaker TV as well. Uh, come over to the website, check it out every day, all day. We got tons of Guild Wars 2 stuff up there right now. If you guys haven't seen some of the posts that we've had up in the past week, great stuff. You gotta just 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 come over and click Guild Wars 2. There's a whole page for you guys. Bookmark it, save it, hang out there. It's all good. And uh, we'll see you next week, every uh, Thursday, six Pacific for Guildcast. Guys, have a great week. Chats, have a great week. See you next week.